Hey everyone, it's great to be with you all. I'm Stephanie Gallagher, a Senior Technical Advisor for Private Sector Engagement and Palladium's Health Practice. I'm really excited to share with you more today about the current status of my leadership project. I say current because really it's just getting started, so let's dive in. As we all know, in the summer of 2020, George Floyd's murder sparked a deep and global reckoning regarding institutional racism and the social determinants of power. Not unrelatedly, the COVID-19 pandemic had transformed life as we know it just months earlier. In our sector, suddenly existing models of fly-in development and unidirectional power flows were questioned and debunked in ways not thought possible before. The large scale and profound structural upheavals created by the pandemic created the space and necessity to rethink the development industrial complex. What does it mean to decolonize development? and in particular for large development contractors, such as the one for which I work, for their mission, their business model, and for my role as an employee and white American woman leader. Localization, decolonization, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. In our sector, these concepts get thrown around. They are not the same thing. Plenty has been written about their definitions and how they relate to each other. My project is not about semantics. However, understanding these concepts and what they mean for a business that is primarily funded by how the US government understands them was a key starting point for me in adapting my original project idea to a new organization with a different model than the one with which I had started when I started the Women Lift Health program. To do this, I started with a literature review and then began conversations with senior leaders within my company, such as the chief diversity officer, a VP for the community of health practice, and finally landing with the newly formed working group on Palladium's approach to localization. What I learned over the course of the year was that business models in the space matter. And from acceptance of that, I was able to think deeper and more expansively about how to have a leadership impact in my current organization. Large USG contractors at this pivotal moment in development must be responsive to calls for DE&I and how they recruit and manage talent. But being an inclusive employer with a diverse and equitably compensated workforce is not enough. They must also demonstrate the principles of DE&I and how they deliver projects. And this requires all implementers to reconsider the power dynamics inherent in the unidirectional flow of financial aid. Localization and local capacity development efforts have aimed to demonstrate that $8 can and should go directly to those closest to the challenges. However, DE&I principles and localization initiatives will not result in the decolonization of development. Not until we reimagine what power is and redistribute our understanding of who holds it as a result can we fully decolonize development. Many have, of you have seen this picture before, and I believe it captures so well the power dynamics we must acknowledge in all discussions going forward. For example, how can we elevate the power of lived experience, context-driven innovation, and community connection and trust to be on par with financial power? Some organizations have approached this by shifting headquarters to the Global South and hiring and promoting staff from low and middle income countries to executive level positions. Others have established local entities from former branch offices. However, while these activities are important in shifting power, they will not remove the denial of power, which results from the compliance required to receive aid in the first place. So long as aid plays an influential role, how can we reimagine compliance to be framed around some other aspects of what is actually powerful? In this context, my leadership question became, what happens to the large government contractor, such as the one for which I work? Do we work ourselves out of a job or simply leave global health? How will good intention efforts be undermined if business model incentives are not fully considered? How can we transform from a development aid contractor to an international partner that supports growth, innovation, and diverse voices? As new to my current organization and not entering in a people leadership role, it took time for me to understand where Palladium was and is on these concepts. And what I have learned is that while it espouses all of them, it does so quite disparately across the organization. DE&I principles have been applied to US-based hires, but not integrated into project staff pathing and advancement. 
Localization efforts have primarily been in pursuit of maintaining bidder eligibility. Local capacity development efforts have focused on seconded technical assistance. The company's economic growth practice has probably come closest to true market development. However, the same power imbalances pervade management and delivery of those programs. Understanding how and where these concepts sat in the organization while also being new required an authentic and inclusive leadership style and a lot of patience. And it is only now in the final month of the journey that I have received the opportunity to engage and help the organization evolve its thinking. This month, I will join a core group of colleagues to develop an organizational conceptual model for how Palladium will move forward, and the timing couldn't be better. I am now more prepared to join this group and lead effectively than I would have been 12 months ago. The skills and support I have received from Women Lift Health to have an impact that is appropriate and right-sized for my career path are invaluable and will shape my contributions going forward. The pandemic and what our sector has been going through has been deeply isolating and raised a lot of anxiety and fear in me as to where my career is going and why. Finding a community of peers contending with the same struggles could not have come at a better time. Thanks so much for listening and thank you, Women Left Health. Thank you. Um, you know, I am just so pleased and excited that Stephanie took on this really hard, challenging question, especially where all of us sit. Uh, you know, in, in this space and, and uh, you know, gra are grappling, you know, with uh, the different parts of the elephant we both embody uh, as, as well as uh, touch, you know, in, in the ways that she described. Um, Stephanie, I guess my, my question for you, uh, I know that you had, um, you know, you looked at what was happening in, in your organization, but would also love to understand or, you know, think through uh, other organizations that are grappling with this and internal change agents and, and how we bring those folks together. Because uh, I know it's also something we are grappling with, we're trying to figure out how to do. Uh, I, I know through conversations that other people are uh, that are internal to their organizations. Uh, did you, as you were doing that, your, your work, um, did you, um, did you identify any groups that bring people together between different organizations to really think through uh, how to implement this internally? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Marianne. And of course, I want to recognize Marianne as my mentor for the program who helped influence a lot of this presentation. So thanks. Um, you know, it was really interesting for me because I had a project idea when I entered the program at a different organization. And I wanted to try to carry that same project idea to my new organization. And what I realized was not only was I new and I had to learn this new organization and how to affect influence uh, with people with whom I hadn't been working previously, but because the organization had such a different business model, right? They, they practice outside of health, not just health. Um, they are a for-profit company rather than a nonprofit where they sat on this spectrum of how they incorporate the decolonizing agenda, how they incorporate localization, EDI issues was very different, right, than, than my previous organization. And so I think what was a really important realization for me is we do need to meet organizations where they are in dealing with these issues. We need to consider their business models and their other businesses and how they manage it. Because um, you know there are many ways to address these issues, um, but not one size fits all in how to address them, right? Um, and then to your question in terms of an organizing body, I've just actually come across um, a group called Creed. I don't know if you're familiar with that. They're having a launch event uh, next week and they have several organizations signed up um, because I think and I brought this up throughout my journey as a problem, I think there's a lot of mixing of what is localization, what is local capacity development, what is diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, you know, I spoke to the chief diversity officer at my organization who was very focused on increasing the diversity of the US-based workforce, right? But what does that mean for our work in an international context? And so I think there is much work to be done in bringing these together in a cohesive way and meeting organizations where they are in their business models and cultures um, to affect change. 